Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got a lot of things to go over and it's condensed into two sections. First up, PayPal CEO on why the company is getting into cryptocurrency. And this is a message for everybody who is new to the crypto and digital asset space and is buying cryptocurrency on PayPal. There are some great things that you are involved with, but there's a lot of things that you need to know. To bring this into perspective, I'm gonna introduce you to Diddy from the Bitcoin family. This gentleman sold all of his personal belongings in 2017, early 2017, to go all in on Bitcoin and what that meant for his relationships with his family, how he's able to travel the world, and the things that are going on, and also some cautionary tales of what to watch out for. So we have those two eyes, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is November 24th. It is around 10 a.m. Texas time. And of course, these are the good days. Bitcoin is up 5%, 14% for the week. And that is probably why a lot of people are here because things are going to the moon. Bitcoin, 19,181, almost at the all-time high of around 19.6, 19.7. So we'll see if we can make it. Ethereum's hit around 600. XRP, fantastic, 67 cents. Tether's got an 18 billion market cap. Bitcoin Cash is up 13. Everything is up across the board. And look at Stellar, 70%, 131% for the week. These are fantastic days. But I will warn you, if you are new to this space, there is a lot of price action and you have to be careful. What goes up will inevitably come down. So I'm not gonna spend too much on these hopium days and how everything's gonna go to the moon because it's not. You have to be aware of there is going to be some changes. So the big thing I wanna get into is the PayPal CEO who is on CNBC and he tells you about why they got into it, but he doesn't tell you the full story. So I'm gonna break down what he talks about and we're gonna go over some points about why PayPal is great for the industry and how PayPal is not great for the industry. So first of all, just let me say this. If you have invested in a Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, or whatever new cryptocurrency is going to be on there in the future, thank you. Thank you for coming into this space. We welcome you with open arms. But since you're here, there are some things that you absolutely must know. And again, these are things that they're not telling you and you have to know. So first, let's break down about what he's talking about here. This is Dan Schulman, the CEO of PayPal. And he's going to ask a question, which is, what is Bitcoin's value proposition? And just so you know, it's not just about Bitcoin going up in price. There are much deeper intricacies of what is happening. So let's take a listen. Well, let me just ask you just straight up about the value proposition of Bitcoin, because a lot of people say, what is its true value? What is the inherent value of Bitcoin? Uh, how do you value it? Uh, I know you own some yourself. How do you value it? Yeah. Well, I think all forms of money uh, are based on uh, trust and, uh, and uh, set uh, values that come from that trust. I think if you take a step back, Andrew, um, especially with the pandemic, you've seen the use of cash decline precipitously, something like 40 to 70% of consumers no longer want to handle cash. Um, and just like every industry is digitizing right now, that is also happening in the financial services world. Um, there is no question that people are flocking to digital payments and digital forms of currency. And one of the things that we looked at, and we talked to regulators around the world, central banks around the world, um, and it became clear to me that it's a matter of, you know, uh, not if, but when and how, you'll start to see more and more central banks issue forms of digital currencies. And I think you'll have more and more utility happen with cryptocurrencies. One of the things that we allowed um, is not just making it easy to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrencies, but very importantly, early next year, we're going to allow cryptocurrencies to be a funding source for any transaction happening on all 28 million of our merchants. And that will significantly bolster the utility of cryptocurrencies. So the question right there that you're probably asking yourself is, 
well, I don't use cash. I just use my debit card or I tap my phone or I use PayPal or I use Venmo. And these are all forms of cashless transactions. So why do I need cryptocurrency? Because what he's talking about right here is essentially a new form of money. So what is the whole point? And the thing with digital assets, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Litecoin, which you have access to, the, the value isn't in that a centralized person or entity such as PayPal, such as JP Morgan, such as Chase Bank, or whatever else, that they have access to this and they're actually be able to give it to you. What's great about Bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies and digital assets for the most part is that they are decentralized. They are not issued by the government. They are digital gold. You have the power. And the problem right here with PayPal, not to take anything away from it, and thankfully that you're here, we really appreciate it. But again, the power doesn't lie that it is in a centralized authority. The power lies in the decentralization. And we're gonna get into that in just a little bit. And one thing to note, unfortunately, since you have bought it on PayPal, it is not decentralized. It is centralized in one point, which is the entity known as PayPal. So the greatest aspect of cryptocurrency and digital assets, such as Bitcoin, is that it has been weakened or taken down to the level of a centralized authority. But believe me, I know, I get it. You buy these different types of assets because you look at it like a stock, like it's gonna go up and, and everything's gonna be great. It's gonna go to 100,000 or whatever you think it's gonna go to. And that's all true, but there's other parts where you need to know. So let's listen to the second part, which talks about how great it's going to be to be able to use this at hundreds of thousands of different vendors that accept PayPal. Also, a little bit about central banks. So let's take a listen. Dan, but just to put a fine point on that, because then you start to talk about Bitcoin not as an asset uh, or commodity, rather, but as a, as, a, as a true currency, if you will. However, I just think it's worth explaining to the audience that you don't intend for if, for example, I had Bitcoin and I was going to buy a pizza over PayPal for me to use my Bitcoin to actually pay the merchant and then for them to receive Bitcoin. I, my understanding is that I would pay in Bitcoin and you would immediately transact into U.S. dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Andrew. So what would happen is um, you would buy uh, say Bitcoin on our platform and you'd hold it and that Bitcoin would have a certain amount of value. And say you wanted to make a transaction at any of our merchants, we would tell you exactly how much of that Bitcoin you need to make that transaction. And we would then immediately translate that amount of Bitcoin into fiat currency. And so the volatility goes away. You know exactly how much you need for that transaction. It would be converted into fiat and then we would use that fiat currency, U.S. dollar, for instance, to make the transaction at the retailer. So the retailer doesn't have to accept a new form of currency like, like crypto. They're basically doing this in fiat currency. Um, they don't have to worry about volatility anymore. But the consumer now has a, another funding instrument, just like uh, – uh, cash uh, or a debit card or whatever it may be in their PayPal wallet to be able to use to make a transaction. So we're making it very simple so, and easy for people right. to utilize crypto as a funding source. So as a PayPal user and you yourself, you're probably asking yourself the question, why do I need any kind of cryptocurrency to go to any different types of vendors and spend crypto over there when I can just spend dollars or euros or pounds or whatever because that's pretty easy on paypal why do we need cryptocurrency well here's the thing you don't you don't need it and the reason why they're offering it is right now you don't have to pay any fees i believe that's uh free uh fee or no fees until december 31st 2020 and then after that there is going to be a staggered fee for every types of transaction. So when you want to purchase crypto, uh, just as a retail investor, it's gonna cost you X amount, whatever they, they, they say it is. And then also for a vendor, and I know this because as a vendor, I'm gonna get charged uh, because they also charge me for every transaction that uh, people do on my website. So the cryptocurrency will be no different. So again, PayPal users, we are ecstatic that you're here, but I wanna tell you about the things that they're not telling you and things that you absolutely need to know. 
First of all, let's start off with the basics. This was an article about five months ago. These are all the blocked countries for PayPal. So when they talk about you can use it everywhere, well, not really. It's uh, accepted a lot more places and a lot of different things. But in all these countries, uh, you're not going to be able to use PayPal. And that's just what it is. That's just one small issue. Second is, it's just how great Bitcoin actually is. It's actually a lot better than gold. And we call it here gold 2.0 or digital gold. This was a report from Vanek. They are big, huge gold bugs. They have billions of assets under management. And this was a report in January 2020. And it's going to tell you about the differences and the similarities and how much superior Bitcoin actually is. And it breaks it all down to traits of money. And it breaks it between gold, US dollar, and Bitcoin itself. So fungible means it's interchangeable. And of course, everything's high. The US dollar, gold, and Bitcoin. Non-consumable, it's all high again. Portability, how can you move it Move it across uh, state lines or even countries? Well, moderate for gold. It's very easy for government issued and it's extremely high for uh, Bitcoin. Matter of fact, if I want to send Bitcoin in, in my Bitcoin wallet, not my PayPal wallet, I can send it to anybody, anywhere in the world in less than 30 minutes for next to nothing. And it's something you cannot do on other formats. How durable is it? Well, it's pretty high for gold, unless you want to melt it down. It's moderate for uh, dollars. I mean, they can be destroyed, but pretty tough and high for Bitcoin. Divisible. This is something that uh, people don't talk about much, but it's moderate for gold. Again, you got to melt it down. Moderate for the dollar. You can go from uh, $1 to four quarters or 100 pennies. And then for Bitcoin, people think that you have to buy one complete Bitcoin. It's not true. There are 100 million Satoshis per one Bitcoin. Think of a uh, Satoshi like a penny, just a ton of them. So you need 100 million to make up one Bitcoin, which is why you can buy fractions of Bitcoins, fractions of Ethereums, fractions of Litecoins, and all the different, different cryptocurrencies that are out there. Secure, it can't be counterfeited. This is very true. It's moderate for gold. You can fake gold. They have um, different ways that they can do that or they can hollow it out. For dollars, we've been doing that for decades and years and years. And then as far as like counterfeit Bitcoin, it's almost impossible. And if you want to know why, go to my free website, danteachescrypto.com, 100% free. All the information is there is free. It will always be. It's very simplified. And I'll tell you all about Bitcoin and the nodes and how that all works as far as decentralization. Ely transactable very high. Scarce, predictable supply. Here's the thing about gold. They keep finding more gold. Here's the thing about the dollar. There's this thing called money printing. When we printed a whole ton of it here in the United States, actually, we printed trillions of it. And for Bitcoin, it will only ever be 21 million. That is it. You cannot get any more. And that is all. If you talk about supply and demand, this is what makes Bitcoin so desirable. And the last three are the big ones. Government issued. Gold is not issued by government. US dollars definitely are. And Bitcoin, it is not issued by the government. Why is that so important? Because governments can shut down centralized entities such as an exchange, such as PayPal, such as any other bank that they want to. So they've done it in China, among other countries, where they are shutting down exchanges or people who they deem as a threat and if you take a look at history, central banks haven't had the best outcome. German banking crisis of 1931, the Greece government debt crisis of 2007 and 2008, and just as recently, the Portuguese financial crisis from 2010 to 14. So if you live in any of these countries or have had family in these countries when this actually happened, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I bet you're thinking, I'm an American. This will never happen here. Well, let me just remind you about the Executive Order 6102, which was put in place on April 5th, 1933 by FDR, where they stated, you cannot hold gold. You cannot hoard gold. We are going to confiscate all your gold. So if you're like me and have a little distrust in the government or have a massive amount of distrust in the government, the power behind Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is holding your own cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, and many others. The problem again with PayPal is that it is a centralized authority and they are in control. You are not in control. So if the government ever came down and said, you know what, I think we need to shut this whole operation down or seize something like that, there is no stopping them. And before you say, that's just crazy talk. Well, this is from the CEO of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon. And he states, he was speaking at the New York Times Dealbook Summit Wednesday, said that Bitcoin is not his cup of tea. He also predicted that governments will soon regulate it more stringently, especially as it goes up in value. The problem with Bitcoin going up in value is that the dollar decreases in value as time moves on. This is a nice little graph of the purchasing power of the US dollar from 1913 
to 2013, and I can only tell you it has gone down from there. This is at the point when the Federal Reserve was created, which is just a bunch of centralized bankers as the federal aspect of government. They are about as federal as Federal Express. This happened in 1913 little bit of a crash here to 1923. Then it kind of picked up with the gold standard. Unfortunately, FDR said, guess what? We're going to take all your gold back, which we just talked about. Bretton Woods established the USD as a world reserve currency in 1944, kept following 1971. Nixon took us off the gold standard and it fell even farther to where we are right now in 2013. Um, excuse me. <laughs> that was seven years ago. So again, it's great that you're in crypto. We are ecstatic that you're here. But again, there's things they're not telling you. So the question is why? Why does PayPal offer all this stuff? Why are they going through all this trouble? I can tell you why. It's part of the same reason why Square, which is owned by Jack Dorsey of Twitter fame, CEO of Twitter and Square, got into the Bitcoin game not too long ago. Now, before I get into it, I will say this. Jack Dorsey is a huge believer into Bitcoin. On his Twitter handle, it has one word, Bitcoin. Huge believer. And his entire company are huge believers as well. And the reason is, is because it drove half of their revenue in the fourth quarter. And this was put out in February 26, 2020. Bitcoin revenue of 178 million between October 1st and December 31st. Now, non-Bitcoin revenue on Cash App in the fourth quarter was 183 million. So if you take a look at that, you're like, hmm, well, if Square can do that and generate so much revenue, don't you think PayPal might want to get a piece of that action? Also, I do want to tell you one more thing. The Ethereum that you can buy on PayPal is fantastic. And it's going to be wildly successful as time moves on. And one of those reasons is because you're able to stake it. So if you hold Ethereum, not in PayPal, but outside of PayPal, you can do what's called staking. And what does that do for you? Well, it helps to secure the network on top of one big aspect, and that is this. If you stake it, the estimated yield or interest, depending on how many stakers join the network, is between 8 and 15% per year. So if you have Ethereum and you want to stake it, then you can gain an additional 15% interest just for having Ethereum. You cannot do that on PayPal, unfortunately. Now, there's different risks associated with, with Ethereum staking, but this is the information that we have thus far. So look, PayPal users, we're ecstatic that you're here. I've said it five times now, but these are just part of the things that you need to know that they're hiding from you. So there's two pieces of action to take. First of all, in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link to my website. It's 100% free, danteachescrypto.com. And you can find out every type of information and all the things that they're hiding from you today. It's simplified, it's structured, very super easy, and you can go down the rabbit hole as deep as you'd like to. Also, in the description of every one of my videos, there is the exchange and wallet fees. And this will tell you exactly where you can Purchase Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Chainlink, XRP, Tezos, EOS, Monero, and all different types of crypto and digital assets so that you can be in control and take personal custody of your assets instead of them being held by a centralized authority like PayPal. And if you sign up using the link, it can give you between $10 and $20 just for signing up. And there is a plethora of them as far as what I recommend and personally use and which ones that I do not recommend. So before I let you go, I did an interview with a very important person named Diddy. He sold all of his personal belongings, house, cars, everything for Bitcoin in 2017, and he hasn't looked back. I'm gonna have him give you his perspective of why he did it, things that they're not telling you, and how to move forward. So let's jump right into my office. So everybody, welcome back to the office. Uh, this is for, not really Q of the day, but I, um, I had a couple of, of questions, uh, especially after that, that piece that we just did where we talked about the open letter to PayPal, which again, we're very thankful that everybody from PayPal is here and that they are gobbling up a ton of uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Litecoin. But again, like what we talked about, to give you a broader perspective of the cryptocurrency market, I invited my friend Diddy on. If you don't know Diddy, there was a, a great story years ago about some, some crazy family who had this crazy idea to, to sell their home and all their possessions and roll it all into Bitcoin. Well, guess what happened to them? Well, they made out like bandits and they get to travel the world and they get to enjoy each other's companies for years and years to come. And Diddy, Diddy welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Oh, man. Th thanks so much for, uh, for inviting me. It's an honor to be on your show, man. And I've been watching it and uh, I, love, I love what you're doing in the industry. And I think we have the same mindset. So for me, it's a pleasure to be on the show. It's a pleasure. 
Thanks. Like, like I told Diddy, we have the same mindset, just that Diddy has much better hair. And then, and, but we're all we're pretty much in the, on the same wavelength. So, so Diddy, tell us about your story, when it all started, and how you got into it. Because we're going to go, we're going to talk about your story, and we're going to get into some scams. Like, we are both fighting right now, because this is going to be a big year for everybody, and we want to make sure everybody's safe. And then we're going to talk about uh, how your approach is all in, and my approach is DCA. So, let's start with your your story. How'd you get into this? And how'd you just say, you know what, let's go all in kids. Um, I think I need to t tell the short version, isn't it? Because the show sure. is not going to be too long. Okay. The short version is very easy. Um, I lost my mother when she was 48 years old. I was Sorry. 24 years old. Mm. Oof. At that point, I couldn't cope the feelings. I became a workaholic in that period of 12 years times. I built up two businesses, one in Holland, one in Malta. Mm -hmm. And in one of those businesses started mining bitcoins and mining dogecoins. So uh, that was in 2013. In 2014, the end of the year, I got to know that my father told me he had cancer and he had one more year to live. So he died in 2016. Mm, At that moment, my whole life collapsed. And I got a huge burnout. I needed to reset. So I, start, I told my family, let's go on a short trip, three months to beautiful island, physical, and my mind needs to reset. So we did this. And during those three months, I rediscovered myself. I was like, wow, I can be very happy with all the luxury stuff I have at home. You know, the Jeep Cherokee, the Audi Cabriolet, and all that mm -hmm. stuff you, you want. And during these three months, I discovered I was completely happy. And then on a moment on Bali on the beach, a friend of me from the Netherlands calls me. And he's like, Didi, do you still own your Bitcoins? Do you still own your Dogecoins? Yeah, but then I'm on the beach drinking my rum and <laughs> watching my kids doing all kind of acrobatic stuff on the beach while I was always en also enjoying a sunset. Uh, so I'm not going to check my laptop. And he kept persuading, persuading, persuading. So in the evening, I called my sister to open the laptop in the Netherlands to check my Doge wallet. There were a few millions of them in there. Uh, <laughs> I called the other person that had my, uh, I, at that moment, I still had paper wallets for Bitcoin. So I had a paper wallet for Bitcoin. Uh, checked that one. And yes, they were still there. So I still had access. And everything was flying up. And then I saw uh, the community growing. I saw the price increasing. So at that point made me decide, wow, I've been living this travel life now for seven months, completely happy. I've never been that happy before. I've never been so much together with my kids. I finally seen my kids grow up. I don't, you know, normally you just bring them to school and do, you do your job and you're a workaholic. You never see them. And now I got that beautiful time with my family and, and, and I just didn't want to change them. So that made me decide to go to my wife and tell her, let's just go home, sell literally everything we have, and just keep traveling the world. Keep teaching our kids, keep leading by example and showing them it's not about accumulating wealth, but it's about accumulating happiness. And my wife agreed with that. But uh, the day after, I decided, but why if we have this bag of money, we sell our house, our companies, our bikes, our cars, you have a bag of money. I'm not going to put it on the bank. I saw what happened in Cyprus. I saw what happened in Greece. You know, I, I believed in the Bitcoin revolution of disrupting the monetary system. My money, they were not going to freeze that one. So I... Let me, so sorry, I asked, Diddy, Diddy, real quick. This is important. Let me pause you. Tell us about Greece. Tell us what happened with the banks and what everything happened so with, with, the, with the fiat money there in that situation, uh, just as a refresher. So what, yeah, so what happened over there is that you, you need to understand those people just imagine a fisherman fishing all his life on his boat every day, day in, day out, earning his money, putting that on the bank. And then a certain moment there comes a crisis and then the government and the banks decide that you can only have $60 per week from your own hard-earned money. They kept the amount of money that people could cash at the ATMs. It was their money, but they couldn't touch it. Touch it. So they froze that money. So... From that moment on, I understood, of course, the power of Bitcoin. And because at that, that moment, I had been traveling all over the world with my family already, I could combine the knowledge of people in poor countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, the Philippines, mm -hmm. that don't have access to a monetary system, that, don't, that are not able to do KYC or get a bank account. And those two, um, and, and those two situations. Yeah, so, so the, the, the experience I had with those two situations that I saw poor people all over the world in the Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, that, didn't, that weren't able to do KYC or have a bank account because of that, so not connected to the monetary system, plus the experience I saw in Europe where they can just freeze your bank account, that 
that created my mindset, and I wanted to have this freedom of spending and earning. And I bet, I bet those people over there, they never saw it coming, or they never really, some may have, but I bet you the majority were like, this will never happen here. Of this, you know, th th this may have happened a long time ago in Germany, but this will never happen here. And I think it's the same way for across the entire globe. I think people are in the same situation. Like this will never happen here until it happens. That's exactly um, that's exactly what I'm saying to everybody. You know, we are born into this luxury situation, and we had some beautiful years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if you if you ask my grandmother or your grandmother, you will hear a different story. They had some different years with some crashes and some wars and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Ne I never believe that we can never. You know, have that situation again. I think the war now will be this new kind of war. You know, there's this digital revolution that we are fighting at the moment. Um, but the people in Greece, they were just enjoying life. They were going fishing. They were just spending their money. They were just being happy with the heart and money. And then, bam, life changes. And exactly that is now happening again to humanity. We were all enjoying life. We were all happy. We could do whatever we want. And bam, you're locked out. This will never yeah. happen here, and then it happens. That's right. And then it happens. So did he take us back, back, or back to the future? So this was a, when you were um, mining Doge and Bitcoin, then you checked your wallets because you set it and forget it, like I always talk about here. Just set it and forget it. Then all of a sudden you had a, just a big windfall. You sold everything. What year was that when you just decided to go all in? So that was in 2017. So that was in Bali when we decided to go all in. I, I, I asked my wife, okay, and we have been traveling, it's beautiful. Let's fly home, sell everything, and keep living this life as a digital nomad. And the day after I woke up and I was like, why not just invest it all in Bitcoin? Why would I leave it in the bank? So I told my wife that that beautiful plan I had, she of course was the first in shock because you know, <laughs> all of Bitcoin, uh, you know, what are we going to do and how are you going to pay and how are we going to have all that stuff comes to you then. But I told her, and, I, and then she just told me, Didi, but I don't believe even that you are able to do it because you're very naturalistic. You have an ego. You, you need your Jeep Cherokee. You need all, all the... So I started to sell everything online in Bali. My car, my motorcycles, my cabriolet, bought Bitcoins for that. I told her, we are going to do this. This is the best opportunity for us to change life, but also show the kids that you can always change life, leading by example. And that's when we flew home. We flew home in 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we put the house for sale for Bitcoin. It and was sold in two weeks. And we were all, uh, and that, that, that's the beginning of the story. Um, so, I don't know. So, you froze a little bit. So I don't know if you caught the last part. Uh, no, okay. I caught it all. So you, you sold all your belongings. You sold all the house. Well, all the house. You sold the house. This is in 2017. And then you say, you know what? From now on out, from here on out, it's all about travel. And it was all about setting an, an example for the kids to say, hey, it's not so much about the materialism. There are bigger things to life that we need to really get into, which is, you know, the love of the family, being around somebody, and then just being around in the world and traveling and seeing what else is out there besides the almighty dollar. I would assume that's what it all comes down to. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's what it all came down to. And then, yeah, just we flew home and we put the house to sale and it was sold for, in two weeks' time for Bitcoin. My pension fund in Bitcoin, the savings of me, of, of our family and the kids went into We just went all in at that point. And then, and then the whole venture started. So I think this is, so this leads me to, to the next part, which is, first of all, great story, Diddy. It's always good to hear this story. I, I read the story, <laughs> but to hear from your, from your, your own lips is amazing. So as time moves on, and right now, everybody who is watching this video, uh, you could be watching this, you know, right now on uh, November 24th, 2020, you could be watching this a year or two years from now. And just remember this, when everything starts in, in, in a certain run, Diddy was at the start of that run. And I think you right now, around this time, is the start of another uh, spectacular bull run, potentially, but, but we will all see. So what's going to happen in 2021, I feel is going to be enormous. And the thing with 2021, is it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. And of course, it's how much you can actually give to your family and spend time and everything else. But when I talk about how much you keep, that's why we are so big on this channel as far as scams. Because if you make, if Diddy made millions and millions of dollars, or Digital Asset News makes millions of dollars, it doesn't matter if you get scammed out of it. And this is the problem that I used to see when I was working home health and helping the elderly. I would see so many scams. And it's a difference between when you get scammed when you're in your 20s and you lose a couple of thousand, 
or even if you, if you lose 10,000, 20,000, as opposed to being 60, 70, 80, 90 and losing your entire life savings. And I saw that every single season. So this is why we're big on it. And this is why I got Diddy on here because we're both uh, pretty passionate about that, get rid of these scams. So here's what I got, Diddy. I'm going to go over my, my scam greatest hits in a, in a very short amount of time. Tell me if you've seen them and what you, and what you tell your subscribers. Let me share my screen real quick. This is the first one. Your subscribers get this. They say, Diddy, I got this nice little email and uh, it's from Ledger or from whatever company and they want me to send them my personal information. What do you tell them? Actually, I'm going to show you this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I just got this this morning. Dear client, we're sorry <laughs> to inform you that Ledger has fallen victim to a cyber attack and that confidential data belonging to approximately 81,000 customers has been illegally obtained by an un unauthorized third party. You're receiving this email because your ledger wallet associated with your blah, blah, blah. Despite our relentless efforts, it's technically impossible to make an accurate assessment and your funds can be at immediate risk of theft. Just download this latest, latest version of Nano Ledger and you'll be just fine. So did he, yeah. you see something like that? Oh, it looks like you froze a little bit. So you see something like, like that, what do you tell your subscribers? Yeah. Uh, I I just tell them please. This 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 is all scams, guys. It's it's it, it, this, this never <laughs> happens. It's a. Uh, sometimes I'm just wondering, do people even really believe, or is it just the greed in them that you know convinces them to then um, go to that? But uh, it, it's all you know. Like even, do you remember the scams that there's a guy from uh, the Saudi Arabia is sending you an email? I need to send over one billion US dollar now because I need to get it out of the country. There are people that really believe these kinds of scams. And this is all, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad for the industry. Yeah, so these types of scams, like this one's a more, more complex. The ones that I used to deal with with the elderly was the exact same ones. Hey, Rob, yeah. there's this prince from Egypt and he wants to send me a billion or a million dollars. <laughs> and all I got to do is just give him 10,000. I'm like, I'm like, Mr. McGregor, just don't do that. It's just it's not going to work out. So, so there's those types of scams. And then there's this one, like we just took a look. We just, we, uh, just saw where it was an email where they want you to download something. Yeah. I always tell people the same thing. If they're going to ask for your personal information or download something, go to the official website. Go to Ledger, go to Binance, go to Coinbase, go to wherever. Just say, did you send me this email? I just sent this uh, letter to uh, Ledger and they're like, of course not, Rob, but I have, to, I have to verify. So there's that. There's also this new one popping up. Let me blow up this. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, that one is really bad. I hate that one. So this one right here is you're going to see these different comments in in every video nowadays and it's going to say hey this is digital asset news and i want you to uh dial this number and then i'll set you up with the best uh hedge fund manager of all time diddy do you get those types of things as well yeah we get them constantly uh, it, it, below my videos and i and then in, in my videos i say to people please never use never go to these um, telephone numbers never text them but you know what is happening now the worst thing is now happening. There is even one of those scammers that is using our logo. So it looks like I am responding to the text message with a telephone number. Yeah, and you know, people fall for it. And I keep saying, I will never, never, never in a video or below in a comment um, give you investing advice. Uh, but some people just fall for it. Fall yeah. for it. I had, I had one of my subscribers lose $5,000 of this way. So it's one of those things that now I pin the comment at the very top. But also I saw something even slicker yesterday, which was, of course, they're, they're using my logo here. Somebody had used BitBoy's logo and said, and, and, he, and they even used his, his terminology. Hey, BitSquad, congratulations. Uh, we're going to give you away this stuff. Just send your Bitcoin to this address. Unbelievable, right? So there's those, yes. there's, those there's emails, which we just talked about. And then this is the one I think everybody is used to, but I think people just coming into the space, they're not going to. <laughs> this one right here, hey, we want to give you $1,000 uh, $1, worth of Bitcoin. Just send us $500 worth of Bitcoin. We'll double your money. Asymmetrical giveaways. Diddy, what do you tell your people? <laughs> uh, as soon as uh, the, somebody from uh, some president from the United States or whatever is tweeting that he will do this kind of giveaways, it is a scam. And never give anyone access to your wallet, to your private keys. Never send anyone bitcoins before you did due diligence. Always check it. Even if I'm asking, check it. Do your due diligence. Do your own research. It, we cannot. 
do magic. And it's not possible. If you send me one Bitcoin, I give you two Bitcoins back. That's multi-level marketing in a scammy way. It cannot happen in a normal way. Exactly. And this is one of our last ones. Uh, this is from uh, the Twitter feed. And somebody had, uh, they had sent this as a retweet. And it looks like an actual Brad Garlinghouse tweet because it has that nice little blue check or that check, which everybody thinks about, oh, this must be the official one. But what they did yeah. is they retweeted a picture that they just used Photoshop and they Photoshopped this in there. And they said, hey, go to this website, XRP2020, which everybody who's listening right now, don't go to that website because they're going to say the exact same thing. Send us a thousand XRP, we'll send you 10,000 back. Same type of thing. It is a scam. It is an asymmetrical giveaway. Just make sure that they, you go check it out with uh, over at Ripple. Any, any other pieces that you've seen, Diddy? Because these are the main ones that I've seen. No, I think that's the main ones. I think the one more important one is in YouTube below the videos. Um, it's not always that they send a number, but it's also mm -hmm. now they do it like in a very technical way that one person asks, oh, I have so much problems with Bitcoin. How can I manage that? And can you please help me? And then you get like 37 response below that uh, uh, comment. Oh. And then it looks like an official mm -hmm. conversation between somebody that was not like at a scan and somebody that's helping him. And then at the end, they always say, oh, but yeah, you, you need to use this guy because he can help you set and get more Bitcoin. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's, that's really terrible. So everybody watches right now. Uh, Diddy has a great YouTube channel called The Bitcoin Family. And uh, as great as it is, he's not going to get a uh, 100 or more comments under one uh, initial comment. So when you see like, like one person comment and all of a sudden there's like a, th a thousand different comments with a thousand different likes on that one, that's usually a scam. So watch yeah. out. All right. So that, those are the big things. These are things we wanna, wanna bring to you. Now let's get to the last piece which I think everybody's uh, curious about. All in versus DCA. And this is where I'll leave it off. So did he give me your best pitch for going all in? I think he did a really good one in the beginning about family and everything else, but let me hear it again. Why go all in today, we'll say, or, or whenever people want to go all in? So if I would need to choose today again, I would do the same. I would go all in again at this moment because I believe that we are in the last part of this bull cycle and that we are going to accelerate very fast in the next coming year. So yes, I am a believer of that Bitcoin can go to 50 or even to 100,000 US dollar next year. So that it's times like today, almost 20, so times two and a half or maybe tomorrow times three. Um, <laughs> so for me, it's a calculation. If you believe that you can live life without having all the luxury stuff around you completely and you want to travel and you can sell your house now and maybe, you know, you get 100K mm -hmm. for selling your house and you invest 100K in Bitcoin now, you will have five Bitcoins. You take two Bitcoins of those five Bitcoins, which is now 40,000 US dollars, to travel for one or two years, you just make a budget. So you have three Bitcoins left. So in one or two years, when you end traveling, you have three Bitcoins left. And those three Bitcoins in three years' times are again around 50 or $100,000 worth of value. You have more than you started even before that you went all in. So for me, it is a belief. I believe in Bitcoin, I believe in mathematics, I believe in the stock to flow model, and I believe if you believe that, then you can go all in completely. Now, if you go all in and it goes uh, wrong, Bitcoin crashes to zero, mm -hmm. I will be bankrupt, you will be bankrupt, but that doesn't matter because you can always start life over again, just like you came from school, from high school, you started with a job. And you got a loan from the bank, you bought your first house, the second car, your third car. Mm. You can do this over and over. That is the beauty of life. Life needs to be an adventure and not running the hamster wheel. And that is why I think you should go all in now. So, and, and I totally agree <laughs> with, you know, like the, the hamster wheel and getting off this wheel yeah. and, and just eluding the uh, nine to five. Because what's a job? It really just stands for just over broke. And that's a problem. So I will say this. That's a great pitch. It's a really good pitch. Actually, it's very hard to follow. But I'll just, follow, I'll just say this for dollar cost averaging. If Diddy went in on 2017, and let's say he hit it at the very top. This is the thing that I always worry about with, with people. And they say, I'm going all in. If they would have hit the top at 20,000 and put all in, and then it would have crashed to 4,000 uh, the very next month or six weeks, <clears throat> like Diddy said, they can recover. And <clears throat> there is one thing that I, I just thought about right now, which is it would suck to go all the way down, right? But if you said, you know what, I'm going all in and then I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do whatever else. How much money do you actually need to do all those things? 
It's amazing yeah. how much money you don't need when you sell all your toys and all your stuff and in your house, anything else. And you're like, I don't need that much. So in that situation, if you're doing okay, and you're like, ah, I'll, I'll be all right. However, if you are hit the top, and this is what I'm, I'm afraid of for most people, they're going to FOMO all the way in here. And then the next month, like crypto is, is very volatile. It goes down to here. And then it's like, ah, that's a problem. So here's what I recommend. You can do the Diddy approach. Nothing, you know, that, that is one approach. Me personally, I'm going to be a little bit safer and conservative because I'm a little bit more boring than Diddy. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to buy a, a, a little bit here, 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 here. And if it goes down, well, it goes down and I've actually hit the ladder. And then if, if at some point I start to feel like, well, it, it's going back down here, I can go to sell a little bit and then off I go. However, it's just a safer approach. You will make a lot more money if you do like with D and, and you go all in. The, the thing is, it's all about timing. I've never thought that Bitcoin wouldn't make it. It's going to be massive. I feel it could be anywhere between 150 and 500K per Bitcoin. The problem is, when is that time frame? And that's the only thing that I have in my mind. So Diddy, that's it for us. I appreciate you coming on. And then uh, just as a, as a little PSA, Diddy's got a great channel, Bitcoin Family. I'll link it in the description. And that is it. Diddy, any more words of wisdom before we take yeah, off? I, I think I can. I, end, I, I will end it with something very, uh, so I will end it with something very safe. Mm -hmm. I think you need to do the combination indeed. <laughs> so yes, all in means for me not going all in just monetary but also life wise so for me all in means to change your life all in so if you change and sell everything you own you keep that money in the bank and then you dollar cost average into bitcoin you have the perfect combination of living a freedom life while playing it safe and investing in bitcoin so that's the only thing i want to thank you very much for uh, for asking me to be online and uh, really uh, thank you and uh, for what you're doing for the space uh, and yeah, thumbs up for that like thousand thumbs up you too, Diddy. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Let's right, jump so that's back. it. So that was a long one, but uh, I feel like it's important that people know this. I'll be putting this on my website as well as putting it up on YouTube as well as Theta. So on top of this, I want to give a shout out to all the members who have signed up for the YouTube channel. Really appreciate it. First off, let's stop with let's start, <laughs> let's start with broccoli farts. Broccoli farts. Thanks, uh, thanks for signing up. I appreciate it. Lucas Bradley, Wesley Gillespie, David Ailes V, Fry Alv. Who we got? Doug Lemley, Steve Scooby, Sergeant Crypto. He's also got a YouTube channel. Check him out. And then Jess Zadra. So again, thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, there's two more that are going to pop up right now. Let YouTube do its magic. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And look, I'll see you on the next one.